Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. You will see behind me we have added a manual changeover switch to this installation. This is one we swapped the fuse box on two, maybe three years ago now, and the customer has had an upgraded inverter, battery storage, and they're wanting to add the function of being able to run the property off grid. They did have an EPS socket, but this is quite a large house and they've now got a much bigger inverter, and there's the potential there to utilize that stored energy when they're having power cuts, which apparently are more frequent than we might expect on a relatively new build state. Now to make that happen, we're gonna be installing an earth electrode with inspection pit, and we're also gonna be wiring in the EPS circuit out of that socket into this changeover switch, pointing the right way again, behind me there. So we're gonna get on with that, I'll show you how we've done it, and if you are a customer at the start of this video, you've got an existing solar PV that you're looking to make some tweaks and changes to, we are here for that, as well as all of the exciting and interesting installs. And as always, our contact details are in the description below this video. Please do get in touch if either of those are your circumstance. Otherwise, without further ado, let's get on with the video and see how all of this came to be. So this is a look at what we've got. You can see we've got a fuse box consumer unit, and this is one we actually fitted now, maybe three or four years ago. I can't remember, but it's on the channel somewhere. Um, the customer has since changed their PV inverter and battery storage. It had uh, Pylon Tech batteries and a smaller inverter. Somebody else has fitted all of this. Um, however, they don't have the function to run the house off grid and this is something they've asked us to add in and uh, so of course we need the backup electrode which Matt is on with outside I'll show you that in a moment and the customer wants a manual changeover switch so they can kind of control the load they have on their install during times of off grid and that one's a Luden I think it's 100 amp that one I'm gonna say 100 amp yes it is so we've got a Luden 100 amp basically in position one is grid position zero is totally off so there'd be no feed into the consumer unit and position two runs off the EPS part from the inverter um, to power this consumer unit. There's a few little changes we need to make in there. Um, if I can find them here, when we fitted this board, they didn't have bi-directional RCBOs and this solar whoops, PV uh, wasn't in its upgraded state, but now we do have bi-directional mini RCBOs from Fusebox. So we're gonna swap that in onto the PV inverter, which is living down here. It's currently this B32, so we're going to get that swapped. And we've also got one of these uh, 125 amp connector blocks. Now the thoughts on that at the moment is to position that so we can take basically the main tails into there, then out of the bottom over to this changeover switch. So then return from the changeover switch into the main switch and also then have the um, two supplies going into here basically so you have your grid supply coming into the changeover switch linked through this and then you have your inverter supply into there as well and then the tails out going into the main switch but I'll show you that when we get to that stage it makes more sense seeing rather than discussing but I thought that was a neat way of doing it rather than trying to draw new tails from the meter cab through into here which would be difficult as a gas um, meter box the other side of this wall as I'll show you in a sec so yeah this just seemed like the easier way around of doing it so that's the current plan of action. Um, Nathan's just getting us our feed across so we're using 10 mil HO7 for this. Um, we're coming off the inverter into a little isolator just to the side of it so there is a point of isolation down there at the minute. Oh, there's just this double socket running off it so you can see we have this smaller cable into the inverter and then the socket taken off the side so we're going to lose that socket come out of there across to the changeover switch and put a bigger cable in to the underside of the inverter there. Just outside Craggy, it started ringing. So, heavens have opened, so I'll make this quick. Matt is just getting his hour earth rod in. So, we've got our earth rod down here. Our custom had all plans and pictures from when the um, services were all put in, so we knew we were fine. And, uh, putting the rod into there, and this has actually been carved out of a hillside, so technically speaking, we're underground before we even started. But we've got our Kerpex coming into the box here. We're going to concrete this in. That's running across under the slab. We've got this Kerpex here, and you can see the PV is actually running up the back of this drain pipe. To the loft so we're just going to tie into that to try and keep it all nice, neat and tidy into the bottom of the meter cab there is an earth bar in there and we're going to join our earth rod into that so it will sit in parallel for all the times we're connected to the grid and then when we go off grid we've obviously got that earth reference that we need for the inverter in island mode but we're just going to get this set back a bit of concrete to pop under here as well because we've had that up just to try and uh, make sure that's nice and solid and then we can neaten up the stones around here get our earth cable onto the earth that you can see down the bottom of there and I'll show you that when we're finished. This is just a rod in eye which runs out to the drain 
over there so we've not gone into anything that way and um yeah that's that he might just tidy enough i'll show you it when he's when he's progressed and get out the rain and nathan's just working his magic on the isolator so you can see with these lewd and changeover switches you've got your mains in which are i mean these are three phase but you've got one five nine and thirteen which are this top left hand side here so your um grid in basically is going to go in there your generator which in our case is the inverter is three seven eleven and fifteen which is this other top side up here and then your load which in this case is our consumer unit is going in four eight twelve and eighteen or twelve and sixteen sorry on that bottom side and it shows you how they all switch through in the top there but nice clear instructions and we're just going to get on with wiring that up now um, in terms of the inverter and then we'll shut the consumer unit down and make all the necessary changes for that in just a minute. So Matthew's just popping our end on there before we bed all this in. We've got the perplex running up the back as I showed. Nathan's busy drilling inside and that loops neatly into the underside of the meter cab and we've got our earth coming out here down to the rod which is going to connect into the earth bar in here. And this is quite neat in here actually. So you see you've got the service head through the meter into a tails isolator and then a switch fuse running off and the customer's consumer unit is just the other side of this wall, um, but they've obviously popped an isolation point with a fuse in here as well anyway, which um, is useful for protecting the tails while they are in the cavity beyond the supplier's fuse. However, technically speaking, we're within three metres, so not really necessary. And you can see we've just got this tied up and on with the, um, with the solar cables that are running up the wall there. We thought that was neater than having another length of Kerpex on show straight up we'd have still needed a little set to get into the bottom of the cabinet because the gas pipe's kind of obstructing bringing it that way so made most sense for us and Matt's just got us looked up on there so we'll pop that in I'll show you when it's bedded up inside got a little bit of trunk in now which I've just been to see uh, in the uh, leads to pick up um, so that was handy that they had that on stock that's 100 by 50 and really that's just to blend in with this 100 by 50 here so we're going to do a little bit of 150 trunking just up to the top of this consumer unit so we can drop our tails neatly through to the um, changeover switch without having them on show uh, or having to run through the side of the board. It just made it neater. And in here, as we're maintaining the earth, so we're putting that earth as you'd seen into the meter cabinet, we want the earth not to be switched. So we don't want to switch out the earth for the inverter. We want that to remain connected on the EPS port when it, the changeover switch is operated, they're kind of living together on and off themselves. We could switch out to just use the rod when we're off grid, however you lose the benefit of that when you are in grid tied mode, so this is typically how we set them up if you've watched the videos on the channel before. If ever was required, it could be made to switch in and out if needs be, but this is a much better overall solution in my opinion. So we've got that there, these are the ones for the inverter in the generator side, we're going to have our load side coming in up, sorry our uh, grid side coming in up here which is going to be from the uh, meter cab and then we've got the load which is going to go in at the bottom here off to the consumer unit once we've got the trunking up. We are blessed with some sunshine so I thought I'd get a quick bit of footage while we've got the power off so thankfully the isolation point outside meant we could do all of this safely but I just want to show you what we've now got so the grid is coming into the top of this 125 amp block and on the underside we have got our grid been taken to the input for the grid on this changeover switch that's then returned to the main switch of the consumer unit which is now the load we popped our cts back on there so they're still going to work it is getting a bit tight for space because of everything we've got going on but that was the neatest way of trying to get all that Matt's just going over talking these down it's a little bit awkward getting in on the side there and then we've got our um eps coming into the changeover switch in the top there and we've swapped this breaker to bi-directional so for those of you who are eagle eyed you'll see bd on the end which i think is the super secret code for bi-directional from proteus uh, sorry fuse box otherwise they look exactly the same there's hardly any different markings on them they seem to have lost the 50 60 hertz marking on there otherwise exactly the same for those of you who are looking for those then if they're bi-directional when you're out on site bd um this board was nice and neat. I think we did a reasonable job, or I did, when we first wired this. And as I said, I'll try and find the video and link it in the description so you can go off and have a little look if you want. And um, I'll just get the lids onto everything. So Matt is finished talking down and we'll run through it and show you what the final setup looks like. 
So we've now got our earth, what, earth rod wired into the earth bar over there, as you can see, and that side is all cleared up now. And we've got our earth pit in the bottom here, which we've just given a wash out. Um, it had back filled with quite a bit of water, so we've seen that drain away, which is nice. And that's all bedded in with concrete. We've left a little bit of a loop on there, so if anyone does need to do any maintenance to it, they've got something to play with. And any testing or such, a nice clean work area to maintain the earth electrode. So there you can see it with its lid on now. So we've got all of the breakers back nicely set. We've got our changeover switch ready to go. We have tied the earths together in this little handy block off the side here. And that is so our earth electrode can perform both the supplementary earth on our TNCS supply and also act as the reference when we're in island mode for our inverter as well. So a nice solution. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. We've run through this now. The customer now has the ability to run both on grid and also when the power is cut, swing her to an off grid state and ensure they are isolated from the DNO of things while they're carrying out their repairs safely independent from that system. We've added our RF electrode in, so there is also the supplementary function that a lot of installations need now with PME supplies, where there is that reference electrode, supplementary electrode, whatever we're calling it, that should be in place on every PME system. So that rod now is serving two purposes. In grid tied mode, it's carrying out that application. And then when we swing to off grid, we have a stable and known reliable earth under the control of the actual installation. And as I said at the start of this video, and probably all the way through it, this is something that the customer wanted. There are automatic changeover switches that you can use, but they wanted manual control so they can kind of limit their loads while they are off-grid. This is very much a kind of homebrew setup of the customers themselves, and a massive thanks to them through the course of this little job we've done today. They've served us up some lovely buns and coffees and biscuits and made the day go a lot better. We've been working in and out of showers. Let's see in the background there, it's... It's currently raining quite extensively, so we've been fighting against that. And uh, yeah, if you've got any questions around this, or you're a customer looking for a proposal of your own, please do get in touch. Our details will be in the description. Drop your comments in below. Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.